Today is Thursday, so we talk about success for Scrum Masters. We've been sharing success stories here on the podcast since 2015, so there's a lot to learn. But uh, wouldn't you like to learn from people with decades of experience? Well, don't worry, we've got you covered. The Scrum Master Toolbox podcast launched Tips from the Trenches, the Scrum Master Edition audiobook. That's version 2 now out. There are 13 audio interviews, 3 hours of audio with Scrum Masters that have decades of experience. We've got Mike Cohn, Linda Rising, Lisa Crispin, Christopher Avery, Emily Weber, myself, your podcast host, Yves Hanul, the editor of the original Tips from the Trenches ebook, also available with the audiobook. Altogether, 13 super experienced Scrum Masters. To learn more, visit bit.ly forward slash audio tips 2. That's bit.ly forward slash a u d i o t i p s and the numeral 2 at the end, all lowercase, all one word. So, one more time, that's bit.ly forward slash audio tips 2 to learn more. And now, on to today's show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to One More Success Thursday. And this week we have with us, joining us from Berlin, Ludmila Reiter. Hi, Ludmila. Welcome back. Yeah, hi, Vasco. Great to be back. Absolutely. Pleasure to have you back. And uh, uh, on Thursdays, we talk success for us as Scrum Masters. Uh, It's important to have that reflection every now and then. But before we dive into that, share with us, what's your favorite retrospective format and why? Hmm. Um, very interesting question because of course the retrospective is something where a scrum master can actually go also a bit crazy and maybe think about okay what's the best thing they can do here and I definitely also needed to stop myself of over engineering retrospectives and just keeping things quite simple sometimes just having a beer and a, a dinner maybe or just having a Uh, Online game night would also be uh, something really valuable for the team. But when we look at the formats, for instance, um, we have these um, dialogue sheets. I don't know whether you have already used them before, where you just have the team sitting around a table and it's almost like a game board. No, I have not. Can you explain how that works? Yeah, so it's a... like looks a little bit like a monopoly. So the team needs to go from one side to the other side and every every player or everyone from the team gets to read out some of the things on the board. So it's one to 10 something. And it's actually a moderated retrospective, but the moderation takes place on the board. Um, so I would definitely also join it and sit with them around the board and also read out some of the things. But basically... The work and the and the um, kind of going through this is done then by the team, and they have this space in the middle of the board which is completely empty, and there they can draw, write things. So either it's also about successes, it's about learnings. They then of course come up with um, some action items in the end. And what I really like about this format is, firstly, it kind of kind of helps uh, a team to also understand how maybe the retro is run. run. So maybe if they want to do it alone one day, they could do it. But most importantly, they sit around one table and they are looking at the same thing and they're kind of starting to collaborate. So I would use this uh, with teams where I had the feeling that they haven't really worked together that much already and they don't really have been sitting next to each other or around the same table for some for a while to just get them into this um, into this situation and kind of into this setup of a round table. Yeah, it's, just, it's also it's always um, good fun because then they take this whole board and they can uh, hang it in the room or whatever they want to do it, uh, with it. And um, it's just a, a nice different thing in between. Do you have a name for this format? Is it just dialogue sheets or does, does it have another name? I think if you Google dialogue sheets, they come up. Okay. Um, I think it's also a free download. Um, 
I can share the link later if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Do share the link with me, and I'll I'll put the the link on the on the show notes so that people can easily find it and and try it out. Why not? Yeah, and of course another thing. I think I also mentioned it before when I talked about the open days, the formats that you can have in a company to, well, foster this communication. And especially now when we are all in the home office, we um, thought about how can we can we help with the teams being at home while well, working really well and independently on their own tasks, but we somehow lose this cross-team uh, communication. So we tried this kind of open day format remotely for three days where we just had this open bar camp style. And I can just recommend doing this when you have the chance. This is amazing um, what energy then comes together. Absolutely. And uh, uh, we, we do have a, uh, an episode here on the podcast with Jeff Campbell talking about uh, a similar organization that has a facilitation program and everything. And, and I do know that Jeff is preparing a similar facilitation guide for hosting oh, an great. open day online. Actually, it's oh, an perfect. open week. Uh, online so uh, I hope he does get that done quickly and then uh, then we'll publish it here on the podcast for sure perfect yes I think this is this uh, this was also a steep learning curve these last couple of months um, how to facilitate everything online but so far as I heard from so many other also teams companies and facilitators uh, it worked out quite well and we have some good uh, advantages now with the online setups Absolutely. It, it gives completely different approaches or it makes completely different approaches possible. And uh, as you said, you know, simple things like trying to get teams to talk to each other. Uh, we can use specific formats for that. But um, Ludmilla, now we turn our attention to why we do all of these things, which is, of course, to reach a successful outcome for our work. So do share with us what does success mean for you as a Scrum Master? Um I think this is quite a difficult question because the success is, well, not only defined by myself, but also about the people that I work with. And they are, of course, always different. So it needs to be always also a little bit different parameters. And what I learned was that I expect where I want to be with a team at some point in time or where I would like to be uh, is good to have so you know where you're going to and, and what kind of methods and things you need to do but what actually happens then is something completely different and to also have this room open for things to create themselves and evolve by themselves and go maybe another success direction i think is one thing that i that i um, learned and if i would only measure the team's success against kind of my expectations of 100 percent i would always be really unhappy because we will never be at 100%, which is fine because we are already uh, maybe moving into some other direction and uh, and having some other successes. What actually makes me really happy how I see my successes as before, when someone asks me for advice or asks me, hey, can you please run a retro? I think we really need it. If a team comes together really independently and they haven't done it before, then I see that, okay, some of the things that we were discussing before that we were just trying out worked. Um, it's basically baby steps. So um, if they run their dailies successfully, independently, and um, they talk with each other, it's the basic thing at the beginning. I always feel like, okay, everyone is telling me something about their work, so I need to take myself Back, so they would just start talking to each other. Really little things are already making me really happy and feel that I, yes, what I'm doing is uh, is successful. Then the other thing is, um, do people understand my role? Of course, I can also help with that. And I will always talk about my role and the other roles that we have on the team. If they, what also happens, they call me up after we were not working together anymore and they asked me, hey, Miller, what's this one method that you did once with us? I'm now working with a team in my new company and I really like this one. Can we just sh- uh, share a link with me? So people actually taking what we learn together, taking it with them into the new teams, um, which I feel is like the most 
the most level of success or how you want to call it what you that's actually <laughs> a very good get. point right and uh, I, I'm sure it has happened to you and uh, definitely some of the most proud moments is when when uh, you know people who I used to work with they they call me back or they email me and they say, you know, th this idea, we're, we're just trying it out uh, right now. And, and they ask for tips maybe. And of course, we try to be helpful. But that when, when you get that kind of validation that people really paid attention, then they really appreciated what they learned when working with you. I think that that's definitely a major sign of success. Exactly. And I think the other, or the other thing that's also important for other people probably to see uh, whether or how you <laughs> Scrum Masters are successful is to be really clear about the role of the Scrum Master in that organization because it can differ, well, it can be really differently in different organizations. And when this is not clear, um, what is also expected from this role and also communicate back, okay, this is what you can actually expect from me and this is what you cannot expect from me at this moment. It is a completely different story. So have this over communication um, about really your role and how you want to fill the role, but also how the organization sees this role. This is definitely something that I missed out on before and it made things quite complicated. That's a great tip to end this episode. Make sure you define what Scrum Master is for that organization, not just yes. in general. Thank you very much for sharing that, Ludmila. Yes, you're welcome. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about the product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real-life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.